Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Coordination in Plants and uh, we have already discussed about the coordination in animals that is human brain reflex action and all. So if you have not gone through those lessons, I'll be putting the link in the description box as well as in the i link above. So please go through it. So today we are going to study about the different kinds of movements in plants, about the hormones which are controlling their chemical activities in plants. So all that we are going to study today throughout the episode. So don't skip the episode in between and uh, read uh, the episode throughout so that many important topics we will be discussing today so without further delay let's get started so let's get started with the coordination in plants so it's a very small topic and i think you will all love this topic as it is very interesting one so we all know that animals have a nervous system right so our animals are having a nervous system for controlling and coordinating the activities of the body and so um, as we all are having nervous system plants have neither the nervous system nor the muscle so how their activities are being controlled so that is a big question right so how do they respond to stimuli when we touch the leaves of a chewy mui or you know that it is a touch me not plants it is very readily available in our houses so when this mimosa family plant you are touching it will just close its leaves so they begin to fold up and droop so when a seed germinates the root goes down and the stem comes up into the air so why these all things are happening so must be there is uh, some uh, part which is a uh, helping to control and coordinate all the movements in the plant so we are going to learn today that part only okay firstly the leaves of a sensitive plant they move very quickly in response to touch okay so that that of a mimosa podica plant that is touch me not plant when you are touching that it will not it will just droop down and it will close the leaves so there is no growth involved in this movement on the other hand the directional movement of a seedling is caused by growth so when the seedling is coming out from a seed it is caused by growth and if it is prevented from growing it will not show any movement so if you are preventing that from growing it will not show any movement so plants show uh, uh, two different types of movements one dependent on growth and on the other independent of growth okay so some are dependent some movements are dependent on growth and others are independent of growth so we have told that the growing of a seedling from a uh, seed is the growth it is showing the growth but the uh, closing of the mimosa leaf is not growth it is the independent of growth so it is another movement right so immediate response to stimulus what is it happening so let us think first kind of movement such as that of a sensitive plant since no growth is involved the plant must actually move its leaves in response to touch but there is no nervous tissue nor any muscle tissue how does the plant detect the touch and how do the leaves move in response right so uh, no nervous tissue is there no muscle tissue is there in plants so when you are touching so how it is closing how it is retracting so in humans we know when we are touching a hot object our muscles our sensory organs our brain our spinal cord all are in a coordinated action and the, um, we can say that the stimulus is being passed on through the uh, nerves the neurons and the uh, we uh, in turn uh, through the motor nerves affected neurons and all we are responding so our muscles are contracting relaxing relaxing or whatever is happening right so it is a complete movement of the nerve and muscle so it's a nerve muscle physiology but in plants what is happening how does the plant detect the touch how do the leaves move in response so if we think about where exactly by the plant is touched and what part of the plant actually moves so it is apparent we can say that the movement happens at the point different from that of the point of touch so the information is that a touch has occurred must it be must be communicated so if you are touching one part of the plant the other part is getting um, contracted or closed the plants also use an electrical chemical means to convey this information from cell to cell so what is this electrical chemical means we should know this also right so what is this electrical chemical means but unlike in animals there is no specialized tissue in plants for the conduction of information so finally again in animals some cells must change the shape in order for the movement to happen 
instead of the specialized proteins found in animal muscle cells plant cells they change shape by changing the amount of water in them resulting in swelling or shrinking and therefore in changing the shapes right so this is what is happening so plants change shape by changing the amount of water in them resulting in swelling resulting in shrinking and therefore changing the shape so if uh, uh, we can say if water is entering a cell the cell will swell and if the water is coming out of the cell it will shrink so this is what is happening in the changing of shape of the plant okay so finally animals they change in order to move from one place to another instead of the specialized instead we can see that there are some specialized proteins found in some muscle cells as well right now uh, now we will move on to this we were speaking about this mimosa podica or this sensitive plant touch me not now we will move that to the movement due to growth this was the movement which was due to the uh, special touch point of touch right so this was actually immediate response to a stimulus which was happening in the mimosa podica plant no growth was in involved and no uh, kind of movement was also involved that was just a response to a stimulus right now we will read about the movement due to growth right now movement due to growth so some plants like pea plant climb up other plants or fences by means of tendrils so how what they are growing they are growing they are uh, with the help of the tendrils they are climbing the fences now these tendrils are sensitive to touch when you touch the tendrils they will just shrink so when they come in contact with any support the part of the tendril in contact with the object does not grow as rapidly as the part of the tendril away from the object so this causes the tendril to circle around the object and thus to cling to it so what when the tendril is uh, getting support from a fence it will cling to it it will roll on it and it will keep on growing its um, other tendrils as well so it will keep on continuously growing the movement so most commonly plants respond to stimuli slowly by growing in a particular direction so the tendril will be growing upwards only in the same direction or in the right ways in the left ways whichever part it was growing it was be growing in the same direction and it will continue to grow until and unless the fence is there so if the fence is over then it will stop growing so it is holding the fence and it is clinging to it and it is growing so because this growth is directional it appears as if the plant is moving so let us understand this type of movement with the help of an example so we will understand this now now this activity fill a conical flask with water we are filling a conical flask with water cover the neck of the flask with a wire mesh keep two or uh, three freshly germinated bean seeds on the uh, wire mesh now this uh, this diagram is uh, for the this figure 6.5 this you can see right now then take a cardboard box which is open from one side okay so you are taking this cardboard box which is open from one side right now keep the flask in uh, this box you are keeping the flask in this cardboard box which is open from one side and you are ke keeping it near the window from where the sunlight is coming right so after two or three days you will uh, see the shoot bends towards the light and the roots away from the light so you have placed the uh, plant in a conical flask you will see the upper part or the shoot is bending towards the light and the lower part or the root is bending away from the light so now turn the flask so that the shoots shoots are away from the light and the roots are towards the light so leave it undisturbed in this condition for a few days so you are turning the plant you are keeping this this uh, shoot towards this side and root towards this side so what will happen after few days you will see the directions have changed again the root will fold towards this side and the shoot will obviously fold towards this side so we can conclude from this activity that there they will always the shoot will always move towards the light and the root will always away move away from the light so this is the condition of the movement right so and what is happening here 
that we will see what is happening here that environment triggers such as light or gravity will change the directions that plants parts grow in so these directional or tropic movements can either be towards the stimulus or away from the stimulus so in two different kinds of phototropic movements what is happening shoots respond by bending towards the light while root responds by bending away from it so how does this help the plant so we have seen this thing that the roots are moving towards the light and roots away from the light so plants show tropism in response to other stimuli as well so this is this type of movement was called the phototropic movement so this was called the phototropic movement okay now uh, when uh, the roots of a plant always grow towards the down while the shoots are usually growing upwards and away from the earth so upward and the downward growth of the shoots and the roots respectively in response to the pull of the earth's gravity is the geotropic so geotropism so this is also called the geotropic movement or geotropism this is also called geotropism this phototropic movement is also called phototropism okay is it clear so if it is moving away from the light or towards the light this is a phototropic movement so the the shoot is positively phototropic and the root is negatively phototropic whereas here the root is positively geotropic geotropism so the root is positively geotropic and the shoot is negatively geotropic so same thing if the stimulus is water hydro which means water and chemo which refers to chemicals it will be hydrotropism and chemotropism okay so four types of movements we have studied here phototropic movement um geotropic movement which are related to the gravitational pull of the earth hydrotropic movement which is related to the water here the stimulus is water and uh, the plant shoot and the root will move away or towards the water and chemotropism is when the uh, plant is responding to the chemical so can we think some examples of these kinds of directional movements so one example of chemotropism is the growth of the pollen tubes towards the ovules okay so about which we will learn more when we examine the reproductive process of living organism so when we will be studying about the how to an, uh, reproduction take place in animals as well as in plants then in living organisms then we will study about the movement of the pollen uh, pollen tubes towards the ovules right so let us now once think again about the how information is communicated in the bodies of multicellular organism so we have studied uh, till now the phototropic movement uh, the geotropic movement and also this is the nastic movement so what is a nastic movement the nastic movement is actually it is a movement uh, we can say that it is a reaction that is unaffected by the direction of any external stimuli so both the stimuli were external so hydrotropism it was related to water chemotropism related to chemical uh, geotropism it is related to the gravitational pull of the earth and phototropism obviously related to the light so this nastic movement is not related to any type of external stimuli but it is very important we should know this so nastic movements are movements found in plants while responding to the environmental stimuli however unlike tropic movements the course of the reaction is not reliant on the direction of the stimulus okay like light heat touch and other stimuli are examples of this uh, stimuli if you are touching the pudica mimosa plant you see that the leaves are closing so that is a nastic movement which is happening so these movement occurs in the plants flat organs such as leaves and petals so they will occur in only the leaves and petals they will neither occur in the root shoots or any other part so only leaves and petals will be affected by this kind of nastic movement and this is a very important part of the movement in plants so the nastic motions are a few of most noticeable plant movements and this includes the carnivorous plant that is venus flytrap plant leaf and the closing as it catches its prey so the venus flytrap plant it looks like this if a prey is coming and sitting on it the leaves will fold itself and trap the prey inside it 
so this is again and crimping the of the mimosa leaves when disturbed so you know the mimosa leaves also we have spoken earlier also when you are touching them they are closing the leaves that is a type of movement that is not in response to any direction of external stimuli that is only a movement um, which is responding to the stimulus okay so this is nastic movement now let us move on to the other parts now the movement of the sensitive plant in response to touch is very quick once you are touching it is closing its leaf it is shrinking its leaf so the movement of sunflowers in response to day or night on the other hand is quite slow so some movements are fast whereas some movements are very slow so growth related movements of the plants will even be slower if you are um, sowing a seed it will take 7 to 10 days to become a seedling and to grow into a shoot and a root so growth related movements in plants will be very very slow even in animal bodies there are carefully controlled directions to growth so our arms our legs our fingers they grow in certain directions so can you think of our hands and legs moving out or growing in different directions no they have certain controlled directions controlled movements which can either be slow or fast so in fast if the responses are fast the stimuli we can say that if fast responses to stimuli are to be made information must transfer very quickly so if you think that uh, you should respond to the stimuli fast the, the stimuli should uh, reach or should spread throughout the body very fast it should be transferred information should be transferred very fast for this the medium of transmission must be able to move very rapidly so in case of a uh, we have uh, seen in the reflex action in humans it is very fast so within a blink of an eye you will react so the uh, the um, uh, sensory nerves they are taking your uh, um, stimulus and they are giving it to the effector neurons the relay neurons are acting in between and the effector neurons are uh, responding to the stimulus so this is very fast movement so electrical impulses are an excellent means of this so if the relay impulses are electrical it is excellent mean it is carrying the impulses very fast but there are limitations to use of those electrical impulses so what are the limitations we should know that so firstly they will reach only those cells that are connected by the nervous tissue not each and every cell of the animal body right secondly once an electrical response impulse is generated in the cell and transmitted the cell wall will take some time to reset its mechanism so once the electrical impulse is generated in a cell it is again transmitted to another cell the cell wall will take some time to reset its mechanisms so there is a time to reset its mechanism and before it can generate and transmit a new impulse in other words cells cannot continually create and transmit electrical impulses so it is thus no wonder that most multicellular organisms use another means of communication right between cells namely chemical communication so this is how uh, there is thus no wonder that most multicellular organisms use another means of communication right so between cells we can say that there is also another means other than electrical communication there is another mean called the chemical com communication right so instead of generating an electrical impulse stimulated cells release certain chemical compound as well so this compound would diffuse all around the original cell and if other cells around have means to detect this compound using special molecules on their surfaces then they would be able to recognize the information right so if there are several certain special molecules on their surfaces then the chemical which is released they will react on the surfaces they would be able to recognize the information and then even transmit it to the other cell so there are certain receptors on the cell which are receiving the chemical signal which are receiving the acting as the receptors and they are even transmitting to another cell so this will be slower of course but can potentially reach all the cells of the body regardless of nervous connections right so the no nervous connections are there regardless of certain nervous connections they are steadily 
uh, and persistently uh, uh, transmitting this uh, stimulus to other cells right is it clear to everyone now now these compounds or hormones used by multicellular organisms for the control and coordination show a great deal of diversity so what does this mean so when the hormones are acting in your body when they are helping to transmit the signal from one cell to another they are uh, having certain diversity so in every each and every organ they are working in a different way in some parts they are helping to grow the fat or in the uh, we can say in some part they are helping in the growth so uh, like that only different plant hormones help to coordinate growth the development and responses to the environment so they are synthesized at places away where they act and simply diffuse in the area of action so like in human body also the hormones are secreted somewhere else and their action they are working on the other cells so they are carried through the blood in our body and they are working the action where they are working the area of action is different from where they are synthesized so here in plants also the place of their synthesis is away from the area of their action so let us take an example and uh, that we have worked with the earlier activity now let us take an example that we have worked earlier in activity 6.2 that when growing plants detect light a hormone called auxin is secreted so what is auxin auxin is a plant hormone synthesized at the shoot of the tip uh, at the shoot tip sorry it is uh, synthesized at the shoot tip which helps the uh, helps the cells to grow longer when light is coming from one side of the plant auxin diffuses towards the shady side of the shoot so when auxin is coming towards the shoot auxin is moving out from the uh, light up light uh, sensitive part towards the shady part of the shoot so this concentration of auxin stimulates the cell to grow longer on the side of the shoot which is away from light so this is what happening in this when uh, the plant appears to bend towards light so the plant is uh, the auxin is moving away from the light to the shady region and the plant you feel that the plant is moving or growing towards the light so this is one example uh, where the auxin hormone is actually helping the cells to grow longer in the shoot tip according to the example of plant hormones gibberellins which like the auxin help in the growth of the stem okay and this you have seen this one we are telling the shoot tip so this is which is helps in the growth of the stems cytokinins promote the cell division and it is natural that they are present in greater concentration in rapid cell division so cytokinins gibberellins and this are different kinds of plants hormone that are promoting the growth but plants also need signals to stop growing abscisic acid is one of those examples of hormone which inhibits the growth it affects the uh, wilting of the leaves so what we have studied here we will study this again in the next slide we will just read the functions of auxin gibberellin cytokinin and uh, abscisic acid in detail and here we have just gone through this in the next slide we will go through all the functions of these hormones in detail so these are all plant hormones right so we will study about the plant hormone in the next slide now only so here comes the first hormone auxins i have just told you what these hormones are doing they are a family of plant hormones they are mostly made in the tips of the growing stems and roots which are known as apical meristems and they can diffuse to other parts of the stems or roots so that is their uh, function so they are helping the plant in growth by promoting the cell division so they help in cell division they cause the elongation in the plant cells that is the cells get longer so stems and roots they respond differently to high concentrations of auxins right so what are they what is the difference cells and stems they grow more and uh, cells in roots they grow less so this uh, root cells they are inversely proportional to the auxin that is more the auxin present in the roots less will be their growth but these uh, stem cells are directly proportional so the amount of auxins if it is more the stem cells will grow more so next we will move on to the next hormone
so gibberellins are the next hormones they are the plant uh, growth regulators and they are involved in regulating the growth and influencing different developmental processes so they are also growth regulators like auxins these are also growth regulation regulators uh, they help in stem elongation germination flowering enzyme induction and also this is also a plant hormone which helps in growth elongation germination flowering and enzyme induction as well so let us see what is next hormone so next comes the cytokinin so cytokinin are a group of plant growth regulators so all these are growth regulators okay so which are primarily involved in performing the cell division in plant roots shoot system this hormone helps in promoting the cells growth development and differentiation so affecting apical dominance and delaying leaf senescence so uh, they uh, help in promoting the growth development as well as the apical dominance is also controlled by these cytokinin hormones and they are mostly found in complex plants bacteria mosses as well as fungi so these are also a kind of hormones which are helping in different functioning of the plant body now last comes the abscisic acid so unlike animals plants also cannot flee from that is they are also cannot run away from certain harmful conditions like drought freezing exposure to salt water or salinized soil right so they must adapt or uh, they they'll have to die so plants what they do this plant hormone that is abscisic acid is a major player in mediating the adaptation of plant to stress so these are helping the plants to combat to stressful environments that is too much uh, ice too much exposure to heat drought or too exposure to salinated soil or salt water so in this harsh conditions in this uh, harmful conditions they are helping the plant to uh, meet up or cover up the stress helping as a role in mediating the adaptation so this is all about the plant hormone and coordination in plants so please go through it properly don't skip the episode in the middle and stay tuned stay updated with all the episodes which i'll be posting and next a very interesting topic will be coming for you all for so, so stay tuned to see what's coming up next okay thank you